What? What are you? You kind of nervous because it is my day to ask you a question? Well, maybe. Yeah. What do you mean? Maybe it's my day. It is my day. You got at me yesterday. I'm going to get at you today. Did you say you gutted me yesterday? Yeah. Well, for a while, that's what it felt like. Um, guys, Brent Abel here. Web Web Tennis Talk. Well. There's, there's another shameless plug. Web oh, it is there. It's at the top of your hat right there. Oh, that's right, true. right there. Right I can hit. see it. Right. What's the right, right shot? I don't know if the shirt, you know, if the video shows the shirt. Um, Jeff Jacklich, my um, compatriot here. And this is goldballhunting.com. And what we're doing is we're sharing personal stories, some a little tough to cough up. Because there's, there's been pain <laughs> along the way as players and also yeah. as tennis teachers and tennis coaches. Definitely yeah. been some pain, and we're going to try to cough up those stories for you so that uh, you can relate. Our, we're going we're gonna, to we're share our uh, aha moments, those, those epiphany right. stories that really, really kind of change things right. for us. And um, Ultimately, and this is just a therapy session for Brett and I, just to, just a cathartic, just to right. get through our hang-ups, man. <laughs> Well, then we could do this every day for the rest of our lives. Every day, man. Yeah. That's why it's easy. <laughs> um, we're trying to help three types of players. Number one, we're trying to help those guys and gals who are playing tournaments. Yep. Right? Um, and, uh, senior, you know, you're... Senior nationals. Yeah, it could be senior nationals, could be senior local tournament, wherever yep. you are in your local USDA section. Um, singles and or doubles, but you're stuck at a certain round. You can't seem to get through to that next round. And uh, we're here to help you do that. We're also helping league players, USDA league players, guys and gals who actually want to move to the next rating label. Maybe you're stuck somewhere at 3-0. you got to find a way to get 3-5. Um, social status, I know. No, I'm kidding. Hey, uh, you know, could it's, be tennis. it's tennis. <laughs> um, it's what? Or... Whatever. You're trying to go to from four to four, five and right. beyond, whatever that is. Uh, or maybe you just, you know, you're happy where you are at your label. You just want to win a higher majority of matches. Right. And then uh, our favorite group, um, Tongue and Cheek, the Wednesday night group of guys and gals playing some yep. doubles out there. Or maybe you guys are playing singles, but you just want to come away with a win every freaking week. Yes. You're tired of buying the beer. You're yes. tired of buying the wine. So we're here to help those three types of players with uh, Gold Ball Hunting, which is a series of video podcasts, which you can find over our YouTube channel and also iTunes and other audio platforms as well. Yep. And um, we're also offering a free 10-minute coaching call, at least now. Maybe when you're listening to that, we've we've taken it off the table. It's no longer available right. because we're just overwhelmed with it. But until then... Uh, we are offering a free 10-minute coaching call, uh, either me and or Jeff, or we could do a three-way call. Um, and uh, the way you set that up is just shoot an email. Let us know at goldballhunting.com, yeah. and we will set up a time and uh, a day and time to do that. Um, so, guys, on that, let's get started with today's episode. Jeff, you are on the hot seat. I am. And, and you know what? I'm going to interrupt you before we even get started here, because... Because, you know, we, we talk about, you know, gold ball hunting. And, you know, for some of the hunters out there, have they seen one? Do they know what that looks like? And what are we talking about for the league players and that kind of thing? So so I don't have one. I have a bronze and I have two silver. So I'm going to show my silver today that I got last week at the at the Wilson in Palm Springs. It was, it was a great event. It, Ed Trost, you are the king of running – national senior event unbelievable always top drawer it's great 600 anyway. 650 plus senior players, players. yeah yeah uh, from 40 to 85s it's unbelievable anyway so i'm gonna so here's this is what you know the pursuit is i don't know is it too reflective there or something well, it's, or it's got me in there like uh like i'm okay, part of the you, gold ball that's cool there you go oh, so anyway it, it's this it's this beautiful box uh in this one there's a silver ball um, with the, uh, get out of the way here. There you go. There you go. All right. Um, with the silver ball in it, with the open up mixed, the box, Jeff, with the mixed doubles title in it. Yeah. And there you go. Take the glass off of that. Right. So, yes. uh, there we go. Um, so there it is right there. Right. So this is silver. So I'm still in pursuit. Um, 
Brenny has a whole collection of these. But anyway, I just wanted to show everybody like th this is the, this is the bragging rights that we're all hunting for. And uh, I got to tell you, um, even though I've you know I haven't crossed the gold line yet, um, it sure feels great to be in the hunt and uh, and to to uh, to earn one. You know. Um, Anyway, right. so I just I wanted to share that really quick. Just okay, to, well, like, my only what are piece, they talking? What are they talking about a gold ball? Yeah, right? Well, what my only that? piece of advice, Jeffrey, is when is when the the first gold happens, and it will. Don't get so excited that you bronze it. Okay, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> let's just let's leave it. Let's just leave it intact. Yeah. So, all right. Well, that's good. That's good. Um, all right. So the question, Jeffrey, is. At some point in your playing career, you bumped up against a, a, a shot in your toolbox that was not getting the job done. Yeah, it just wasn't because you were getting overwhelmed by the by the better guys. Yeah, and you came to this realization: Hey, if I don't fix this thing, and you already understood all the strategies and techniques in terms of, you could see. Well, what's or who's doing what to whom? So you kind of <laughs> right. understood that whole thing. Right. But was there, and I'm not talking about a total overhaul. No, no, no. I'm talking I know, about I know just exactly a, what you're talking a about. little tweak that you had to do that now all of a sudden guys couldn't pick on that thing. Right. Um, for me, the pursuit became uh, the return of serve. Um uh, I was capable of, you know, getting the point started, you know, I could get it going and, and that. Um, but at the time, uh, I was working with, uh, Sherm Stever, who was also working with Joe Myers at the time, you know, just great NorCal ball player. And, um, so in our discussions, you know, Sherm and I really decided that, you know, like the return to serve has to become that thing, um, that, that puts that extra amount of pressure on the opponent, um, so that you know, I was winning my serve. We had spent lots of time on my serve and being able, being very target oriented and increasing pace on it, and and became very confident in my serve and delivery of that. And then my volley, of course, was already there. Um, but that allowed me to win my serve at 15 and at love a lot. So when you can turn around and hand the balls to the other guy in a minute and 15 seconds because the game's over. And, and we see this now with Fed. You know, we've seen games when they, when they have the clock running, and all of a sudden, literally, it's a minute, 10 seconds, and the other guy's got to serve. And the last time the guy served, it was four deuces. It was a 10-minute game. And maybe Fed didn't break, but, man, it doesn't feel good. A minute and a half later, a minute, 10 later, he's serving again. So, yeah. anyway, we kind of looked at that, you know, at that point in my career and really pursued the return of serve to the point where – um, uh, shrinking up the backswing, uh, the technical side of it was shrinking up the backswing, getting very compact in, in the initial turn and coming back to the ball. And um, the way we did that is uh, Sherm would start delivering serves from just inside the baseline. And we would do X amount of, go ahead. Well, just I'm, I'm just curious, before you got there. Yeah. What 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 was what was the pain? What, what what was the struggle that you were going through with with the return? And because I know that a lot of players listening uh, have, have got the same struggle, right? And so, so the, the, pain, the pain was not not putting enough returns in the in the court that that not only either missing the return hmm. or just not inflicting any kind of pain whatsoever, just getting the point started, and so. Uh, which which then now all of a sudden sets her, you know, four all, five all, tiebreaker all the time. And and so there – go ahead. Well, I'm just saying so, you know, when, when you were serving and you were saying, like, I'm, I'm just going through my service games. And, and, you know, part of that was not – I mean, they didn't return every time. They didn't return your serve every time. And you didn't hit a, a classic, perfect, knifing, skidding volley to the open court every time. Right. So there were some times when they either missed it or they gave you such a fat sitter, or there were a few times where you had to dig one out, maybe didn't right. win that point. But um, I'm just, I'm just curious if, if that was the same thing for them, 
knowing that the better players, especially when you were playing back then, it's mostly serve and volley. Right. Not that many guys were serving and staying back. It's different now. But was that the same thing where they were serving and you just – you weren't challenging them enough with a tough low at their feet return or out wide right. and either way it wasn't going to court or it was right. sitting up too much. Right. And so the painful part of my career at that point was the, 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 the most pain was is that, yes, I was still struggling, you know, uh, getting through first rounds regularly then. And then, you know, second and third round still just now is the next level of player. And, and just, so that became really painful that I, I, I had a sense that I could do this, do it better, that I could play the game better at a higher level. And there was these elements, these very specific elements along the way that needed to be improved. And, and the return of serve became an obsession um, with me. Um, and, and so we just, <laughs> all Shawshank all day, we got down to doing the work. Yeah. And... And there, I don't, I'm not sure there's, you know, you can improve your serve. And, and even if you don't have a, a lot of uh, heat on the serve, your ability to hit a target, if you can hit your target, that solves a lot of equations for you, hitting a serve, you know. Um, volley technique, all those things, um, you know, create the opportunity to win your serve a little bit easier. But the return of serve in tennis is, is this thing that if, if you can really – master it you have created such an overwhelming advantage um in the in the pursuit of winning a match that i can't even describe to you how much pressure your opponent feels when you step up to the and you're just looking hungry for the ball oh god please hit me a good serve you're looking for it you know so much that so that became my obsession at that point in my career and that and that and then and then mastering that really catapulted um, my results, um, uh, like tenfold, like I went from no ranking in NorCal in the men's open. And at that time, you know, the men's open category in NorCal was, was Loaded. so, was so deep Loaded. with, with characters. We could just name, 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 name. So I went from zero to, um, most improved player of the year and number 17, I think in NorCal. If, if memory serves me right. So that's a big jump from nothing to that number in NorCal at that time. And that's something I was very proud of at the time too. And that, and so the pursuit of, of the return of serve is what, is what changed my outlook and my results dramatically. So, so the pursuit is to me, it's kind of like two things. And I'm, and the second thing I, I want to dig deeper into, you know, number one is there's this mindset. There's this, there's this kind of realization that, Hey, if I don't get the return of serve going, if I don't put more pressure on the server with my return, nothing's going to really change. And, right. and in fact, I'll probably put more pressure on my serve because I got to hold. Right. I got to right. hold. And, and I'm, I'm impressed that you were holding so easily, despite the fact that, that you were having to go to, you know, five all, six right. all, play a lot of but- tiebreakers. Yeah, but that also is 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 why you know I struggled though in those you know you know first, second, and third rounds is yeah. because I'm relying on my serve just to keep me in it. So and, and so you know so so there is that uh, extra pressure, and that's so right. it, it didn't keep me in it all the time because you know I I failed. I, I you know I, the pressure got too much, and I you know I chunk a serve, and I'm, I stiff a volley, and oh there it goes into the fence or whatever. Right. So so you know. so you have that moment where you go look mentally I. I got to change this thing. I got, I got to figure this out. So you got to, you got to show me, you guys work on it. What I'm curious is not the whole thing, but what, was there any tweak that you made to your return to serve in general? Some kind of a, some kind of a technique thing might've been, could have been something as simple as what you've told me about before about, you know, the framework, how you hold your hands here and, you know, you want me to be a little further out and, you know, further away from my body. Right. Could it be, you know, for me, when I, when I got better at returning service, when I consciously, as the toss went up, I just, I just felt my, my, my fingers and my hands just really go soft. So I wasn't right. gripping. I wasn't, uh, you know, and here and mentally, that was the big mental shift for me was getting away from tension to, I trust that if I'm relaxed, I right. will turn and I will see the ball and I will eventually, if I have to firm it up a little bit of contact, 
Right. But was there one thing that you and Shermie kind of hit on that, that you absolutely had to do to make this return to serve a whole lot better? Uh, re reduce the size of the stroke. So making it compact was absolutely uh, the way that, that I found success was it became a very compact, um, aggressive move on the ball. And um, like I said, untold hours of, of receiving serve, receiving serve, receiving serve, and just compact, compact, compact. What does that mean, it, compact? Does that mean, does that mean, I mean, I mean, you're not playing it open. You're not, you're not facing right. it. Right. So, well, what it, what it isn't, it's not, um, it's not your rally ball forehand. And we see, and you know, you see that, I see that all the time where guys are, you know, trying to return serve with their full, you know, rally ball stroke forehand, and it's just too much. You just don't have the time frame to actually get it done. And, and also, you may find that you back up to, to, to order, yeah. in order to be able to execute well, that. To, well, now, to buy no, more time. Right. So there, there are reasons, you know, in a match to back up, but it shouldn't be simply because you need time to finish your stroke. Because now you're just now you're just putting the ball in play and 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 giving the guy you know uh, extra real estate to work with. So so for us the compactness was you know and and uh, you know it, it's just this this shorter compact turn to either side and as you described with the hands out in front and and it just became this short um, strike of the ball that got the ball across the net very quickly. Um, made the guy on the volleys play in the dirt a lot and have to chunk something up to me. Um, and then as, 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 as I really started to become confident, I, then I started to move the ball out to the edges um, okay. right. to, to really make the guy stretch. But, um, you know, the, it, just, it was just this progression of, of Sir, Sherm serving from the baseline, and then he would move halfway from the baseline to the service line, he would be a quarter of the way in the court. Mm. Serving full, serving full. So you and had then, less time to react. Yeah, and then, yeah. so there was about three progressions until he was standing at the service line serving full. And I wasn't backed up. I was two feet behind the baseline maybe and just right. set, boom, go. Right. Set, boom, go. Until it just became this natural, it just became, it became comfortable for me to be there and he could go full tilt boogie and I was on the ball. And so I never had any fear then of, of servers serving at me who are big servers. I almost like went, yeah, go ahead. Bring that big flat serve because that's the easiest thing on the planet to, to send back. This just feels great. And so that's when all of a sudden my matches, you know, catapulted. And I, and I, was, I, was, I was running. I was literally running through the first, second, third round of, of tournaments. Um, fun. So, yeah, it was fun. It was fun. That's cool. A lot of um, well, guys, hope you enjoyed today's episode. That's a great, uh, that's a great change. That's a great yeah. change. And, and it's sort of, it's a realistic thing where you, where you go, look, all right, forget the return to serve. I just need to make my service games even better. Um, and I think a lot of people do that. They, they, or a lot of players will, will do that. They, they don't really deal with the problem. Right. And uh, so that's great that, that you did that. Guys, um, thanks for hanging out with us today. Hope, hope you got something, some little nugget out of today's episode. Uh, as always, a couple things we want you to do is we're still offering a free complimentary 10-minute coaching call with either me and or Jeff or the three of us can get on a, on a, on a call. And that little one-finger <laughs> wag right there is to remind you that – this is a short call. It's free, but it's short. You got to bring that number one thing in your game that you cannot figure out. Maybe you've been working on that thing for a while, or something's right. cropped up in your game where you know you got to deal with this thing. You got to address it, but you've not figured it out yet. And the way to set up that call: shoot an email to let us know at goldballhunting.com, and yep. we'll get that uh, we'll get that set up. Jeffrey, four things. Yeah. Four things they have to do. There's the finger again. Like us, share us, subscribe to us, and please let us know what you think in the comments below. Love to hear from you. Boom, baby. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out with us again today, as always. Uh, come on now. Got to get out there today and help someone else have a spectacular day. Jeff, we'll do this again tomorrow. Can't wait.